Welcome back to White Mountains Livestock. In this episode, we're going to show you guys how we deal with predators out here on the ranch to keep our animals safe. Stay tuned, it's coming up. guys like I said in the intro in this episode we're going to show you guys how we deal with predators out here on the ranch now to start with obviously I'm out here in the pen one of the pastures with the horses hey Sonny star apparently is behind the camera shooting this thing uh, <laughs> but anyway so what we do out here with the horses is we're using a series of fencing so we've got two types of fence out around the horses we got your standard corral panels and we've got this steel fence that we put in uh, when we first moved up here this winter. This is half inch sucker rod, three eighths inch uh, steel wool pipe. Pretty stout, sturdy stuff. This ain't gonna break. Got good welds holding it all together. On the other side, on this back side, what we've got is we've got our corral panels over here. Now, go this other side, maybe you can see a little better. So, we've got these corral panels here. Now all these panels and this fencing, all this stuff is going to do, in reality, is just keep your larger predators. It's just going to discourage them. It's not going to keep them out. Ultimately, at the end of the day, the horses defend themselves. Okay? Um, we've got a couple that are pretty cranky. Tiz, if you guys remember, actually I want to show you this real quick. If you guys remember in a previous video, I showed you uh, my, my wife's off the track thoroughbred, having some serious feed issues. He is actually trucking right along now. He's doing good. How you doing, Tizzers? Hey, buddy. Nice big boy right here. And uh, I can believe he's 17 too. So uh, I'm, all, I'm just under six foot, and uh, he's uh, not too far off. He's about six foot or so at the withers, a little under. But uh, he's doing good. He's walking around a lot better now, getting a little cranky. Um, typical old man. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that. He's actually out with the rest of the horses now. Our farrier's been doing an amazing job with him. So, at the end of the day, the horses, they will defend themselves. They will protect themselves. Um, and we do have them in two separate herds. We have ours over in this pasture. You can see Widow back over there in the back. So we do have ours over here, and then our friends, they have theirs over on the other side of this steel fence. It goes all the way around for their pasture. Um, so we've got enough horses in here that if a pack of coyotes comes in, they can deal with that threat. Next up, I'm going to take you over. I'm going to show you guys what we got set up for the chickens to keep them safe. All right, so we're over at the chickens now. Let me show you guys what we've got going on to keep them safe. Uh, we'll go ahead and get this door closed. I'm going to show you on the outside first. So basically all we did was we just got a bunch of pallets, we stacked them together and just got some siding on it here on this back side. Now this is their nesting area, it's where they lay all their eggs, they do all that kind of stuff uh, right inside here. It does have a roof on it, um, I'm not climbing up there to show you, but we are two pallets high and we have chicken wire wrapped around the outside along down towards the bottom here to discourage any smaller predators, bobcats, that kind of stuff from getting in there because, you know, they will take out our chickens. So, let's go inside and I'll show you how we've got this thing set up. Now, for the door, we've just got a regular door on it uh, with a piece of rebar we drilled into the frame here. A piece of rebar goes through just to hold it. Now, on the back side here, all right, guys, so now we're inside. Apparently, my uh, finger hit the button on the phone, killed the camera when I was coming in the door. Anyway, I'm right back over here at the door. So we've got a latch here on the insides because we do get, you know, 50, 60 mile an hour winds out here at times, and it will blow this door open. So when we're in here, we've got a latch. We can latch that so we don't get a bunch of chickens out running all over the place. So what we've got is we've got we keep our feed and our bins and stuff in here for them. Uh, shavings, which obviously, as you can see, they uh, do enjoy laying in. <laughs> and then uh, some nesting boxes. We've got a cat carrier that they do nest in and they will lay eggs in. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any in there at the moment. Actually, there's four in there. And then we got four back there. So we've got 10 eggs in this coop 
uh, correction, 11. There's one actually over here behind this uh, barrel of feed there. So we got 11 eggs. Now, mind you, we just collected, I think, 10 this morning. Um, so they're laying throughout the day. We're averaging anywhere between 18 and 20, 24 eggs or so a day right now. Um, our friends have their chicks in here. They built this little brooder. They've got some a uh, couple baby ducks and uh, some chicks in there. Get a little bit closer so you guys can see. Those ducks are about ready to move out in with the rest of them. So that's in here. We've got a uh, roof on it here so that uh, you know that they can get out inclement weather and stuff like that. It is open above the door, but we're not too worried about that. Um, out here, we actually have the run for them so they can get out they can run around they don't have to stay cooped up in a small area because we do have about 30 chickens right now not counting the babies over there and not counting the special i'm gonna show you guys at the end we had six babies hatch out yesterday um so i am going to show you guys that uh this is one of my favorite ducks right here uh she is an amazing layer constant now, obviously, my favorite, Drake, right there, that mallard right there, beautiful boy, um, love him, awesome duck, not a fan of you messing with him. So anyway, so what we got out here for water, as you can see, we're full up out here, uh, two pallets high, like I showed you guys on the outside, the chicken wire, so we don't have to worry too much about the predators getting in here. Birds is going to be, is our only real issue, and we haven't had a problem with them so far. So right here, we've got our duck pool. Um, the chickens do drink out of it. Um, unfortunately, they're kind of dumb because, uh, you know, ducks are freaking nasty. Uh, but that's mainly for the ducks to get in there. They got to keep their feathers wet. We do have a drinker here for the chickens. Uh, mind you, sorry about the constant crone. We got like six roosters in here and then one on the outside. So um, we do keep water here for them. So they do have fresh water. We got another nesting box over here. They do go in there at times uh, to lay. Um, hasn't been real crazy lately. They haven't been doing a whole lot of it. So, but that's what we got with the chickens. Um, progress. We got rid of that old coop that I showed you guys. This is the new one. Um, I'm actually building another one just for the uh, company's chickens, uh, further over by the garden. Anyways, next up, we got a couple little baby pigs we pulled in uh, about two weeks ago. Okay, shut up. I'm going to show you guys how we got them safe right now until we get them moved down over by Tidbit. Now, as I said, we got two baby pigs over here and uh, cute little things. So right now what we've got is we've got them in one of our old chicken coops right now um, because biosecurity is important. We needed to keep away from Miss Piggy until we knew that they were good to go. No sicknesses, no diseases, nothing like that. They're actually doing really good. They'll be getting moved over here in the next day or so. So these guys are right about two months old. Uh, both of them are gilts. Um, they're cranky little things. Uh, but they're right about two months old, so they're little itty bitty things. Uh, one of them is actually for a customer. One of them is actually uh, our next meat hog. We just took uh, Miss Piggy in the other day. Uh, actually, a couple days ago. So this is just an old chicken coop. We've got it sealed up. Now, we, you know, it's makeshifted right now. Uh, we got an old horse blanket up to give them some shade. Um, they can push these doors open. In fact, when we first moved them uh, to the property, uh, one of them actually got loose. My wife was in there getting some straw laid out for them, uh, getting all spread out nice and pretty. And one of them got loose, and that was about a two-hour ordeal of chasing them across the property. So that's all this is. It's just an old chicken coop. Um, and that's it. So it keeps pretty much all the predators out except for the little bugs. Uh, but you know with that kind of stuff. There's not really a whole lot you can do with it So next up I Gotta check my water on the tractor. I'm filling it up so I can go uh, get tidbits some water and uh, I figured I go ahead and shoot this and show you guys what we're doing as far as security um, Actually, I can show you what we've got up for the cows uh, Friends they picked up four Aberdeens so uh, little miniatures freaking tiny little things so i'll show you what we what we got over that it's just fence um but I'll, I'll go ahead and show you they got steve the 300 pound goat they got him in there with those cows 
uh, which is rather interesting. In fact, he's laying right here. They are pushing on this fence right now, but uh, Mark is in the process of getting wire and stuff run uh, to keep them from pushing. And this is what we've got. Um, there's some wrap wire fence and a couple strands of barb that he's getting run now. So nothing real crazy, nothing fancy. It's just fencing. Um, but there's four of them in there. One of them's a couple months old. He was just born in January. Um, but they're, I don't know, they're running around somewhere. This, this, uh, little pasture they've got actually extends out. We've got a road that runs the perimeter of the property, at least on this side of the property. And that, uh, that pasture for the cows actually sits right in the middle of it. So we can get to, we have road access to it from all the way around it. Uh, except over here where we actually have to just walk but you know it works don't have any problems we can we got a load and shoot over there we can just back the trailer right up to and uh get them loaded in so next up we'll go down and i'll show you how we got tidbit uh penned up right now i know you guys have seen it a dozen times um but i'm going to show you specifically what we have to help keep predators out and then what we're going to do when we get the uh, the baby pigs moved over there uh, in the next day or so. All right, guys, like I said, we're going to show you how we keep uh, deal with predators over here at the hog pen. Tidbit, she's all that's left now. Uh, don't mind the mess. She got a little treat of some little Caesars this morning. She, uh, she loves her cheese pizza. But uh, she's what's left. So we're getting the babies moved over here pretty quick. Uh, pigs are extremely social animals. We don't want her by herself. Uh, she was a little depressed when we took Miss Piggy. Uh, she was okay when we took that barrow in. Unfortunately, uh, she was a little upset when we took Miss Piggy in on Sunday. Uh, today is Wednesday, so a couple days ago. Anyway, let me show you what we got going over here for these guys. So, same thing. We're just using some horse panels. Well, actually, technically, there are a couple of gates. Um, we're using wrap wire fencing. This wrap wire is critical if you're going to use it around hogs. The uh, welded wire itself, they will break that stuff so fast you wouldn't believe it. So this welded wire, they can hold it. This holds up a lot better to them. Um, now we got these gates held down, nothing more than just T-posts, uh, and we've got them wired together for now. Um, coming up for the babies, this is what we're moving to. So we have a series of pallets. We're actually going to drill in here. And then we're going to run our screws from one into the other. Uh, we might take some two befores, put them on the back just to help join those together. Um, so that's what we're doing for the babies. Now with the pigs, obviously some parts of the pen, like over on this back side, um, coyotes could get in here. This gate kind of sucks as you can see these pigs i mentioned in another video they're extremely strong um they bent the crap out of these freaking gates okay i mean the ever loving mess out of them they have bent them they bowed that one out over here uh but this one they could get out of here if they wanted to um so we again we do have the wrapped wire fence this is a little bit uh, lighter gauge um but they will push it as you can see they do have it bowed through here uh, but they do, they've only gotten out once, and that's because we didn't have the gate tied off real well. Uh, this panel right here, this is actually an extra one that we use when we're loading them. Uh, we don't have a load and shoot for them. So we take this panel, we untie the gate, open this up. It's the only time this gate comes open is when we're bringing hogs in or we're taking them out. Um, but we'll open, we'll break, we'll cut these uh, baling twines here. We'll open this thing up. And then the uh, door on the trailer swings open. So we'll back that up over on this side. We'll pull this up on the other side. And we'll run them in that way. Um, other than that, you know, that's how we deal with them. I mean, if something small comes in here, a single coyote uh, tidbit could obviously, you know, she could take care of that. Get that thing out of here. Uh, she is right around 400 pounds. Uh, so a single coyote, she could easily um other than that that's what we've got going for uh for predators out here birds we don't really worry too much about them there are some hawks and stuff like that but i mean at the end of the day your animals need sunlight 
you know, just like we do. They need, you know, all the goodness of the sun. So we don't worry too much about them. We haven't had any issues with them up till now. Uh, like I said, we moved up here in November. It's now what, May 1st. So, you know, about seven months we've been up here now. Um, so we haven't really had too many issues. We do actually, right over by here, on, uh, by the hog pen on this back fence line, um, we get a lot of coyote activity. We've never had an issue with, with them getting with the hogs. I have come in and found, you know, pieces of rabbits and stuff that they've gotten a hold of that have run in there. Uh, they will take out little dogs. Um, but, I mean, other than that, you know, we, we really don't do much. I mean, other than that, if we do have an issue, uh, coyotes just running up and down the fence line, running across the property, not disturbing anything. We leave them alone. The minute they come after one of our animals, uh, be it a chicken, a hog, a horse, whatever, we do shoot it. Um, I keep a 45 on me because we have been out in the mornings feeding and had coyotes run into the chicken coop uh, before we got it moved over and uh, tried to take some chickens. Um, and then for the longer stuff, if I'm up at the house and all of a sudden, you know, the hogs down here, I can hear them go just start going crazy. Um, I'll grab a 6.5 Creedmoor. I'll pull that out and, you know, take care of it if I need to. Um, but that's only if they're actually going after our animals. Other than that, we let them live their lives. Um, if they're leaving the animals alone, there's nothing to worry about. You know, let them live their lives. Let them do their thing. Um, you know, there's no point in senseless, you know, killing for no reason at all. Um, other than that, guys, you know, that's what we do for predators. Uh, you know, it's just a series of fencing, just physical barriers. Um, we don't use hot wire. We don't use, you know, any of that. We do use a little bit of barb for the cattle. Horses, we do not use barbed wire, nor will we ever use barbed wire on the horses. Uh, they do have a tendency to get caught up in it, and it can do a lot of serious and permanent damage. Um, and in some cases, it can even be fatal. So we don't use any barb. It's mostly just fencing. Uh, you know, corral panels, steel fence, uh, wrap wire fencing, the no climb, and firearms. And that's how we deal with all of our predators out here on the ranch. Uh, like I said before, we do have coyotes. Those are actually all over the place. They're crawling out here. Um, but we do have some bobcats, too. Uh, we haven't seen any evidence of mountain lion, so we're not sure there. Um, and I'm sure there's, you know, vultures and, and other predators of the air roaming around, but we haven't had a problem with them, uh, and we haven't seen them. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Don't forget, if you like what you saw, you want to know more, this is kind of what we do. Uh, you know, all about livestock, ranching, homesteading, that kind of stuff. Um, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. That would be absolutely awesome. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, if, you know, if you have any questions or, you know, anything else you guys want to know about, let me know in the comments below. Um, I'll be more than happy to respond to those uh, as much as I absolutely can. Right now, we're a small channel, <laughs> so I can uh, respond to all of them. So thank you guys. Also, don't forget, check out our channel page. We've got our links to our social media stuff there. Guys, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and you guys have a great day.